I took this job because I believe in this. We're taking Gemini and bringing it to various parts of, of, of Google Home. It lets you sort of get to what you care about most as fast as possible. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to another interview segment we have. And we're on a roll here with Google, and I have Anish here with me, who is the head of Google Home and Nest products. Um, and they announced some pretty new and cool stuff here today. So I want to start off with the very first one, the Google TV streamer, otherwise formerly known as a Chromecast. One, why the name change? I think with the name, it reflects where we are right now at this moment. Google TV has built a phenomenal UI and capabilities. We're building Google TV Streamer to be the streaming device of the next generation. Uh, when we built the original Chromecast, it was really solving for where we were you know, 10, 12 years ago, where you know, users who wanted to stream content on their TV couldn't. Uh, if they wanted to stream content from their phone to their TV, they couldn't. So the Chromecast was really a device to enable that to happen. You know, a decade later, uh, what people are looking for in a streaming device is quite different. They're looking for a device that can help them sort through the myriad of content that they already have, as well as you know, the, the sort of proliferation of smart devices in their homes. And so the Google TV streamer is going to help you do that. It's going to help you sort of sort through that content and be this hub for the home. Nice. Um, so designs change. Yep. Uh, we see we have two different colors, one in porcelain, one in hazel. Now, can you walk us a little bit about the design changes? Because this is more than just a streamer. It's also a, uh, a hub as well. Yep. So why the change from being something you can plug just at the back of the TV to something that's a bit more aesthetic and you know, fit into the home? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we, we were trying to be very intentional about the design. So in designing sort of the new Google TV streamer, we wanted to build something that fit and blended in really, really well alongside your TV and sort of your media console uh, so that it could sit there out in the open. Uh, and a big part of that was also, you know, we've, we've added in a whole bunch of new connectivity into these devices. So the devices now have, you know, Ethernet port, USB-C, HDMI 2.1. Uh, it's also got a built-in thread radio. Now, a big part of that is you wanted to be able to have all of that connectivity, but where the cables could actually just fall off the back. Uh, and then with, with things like radios, you want those radios in this device, but not stick the device into a cupboard, for example, uh, which would interrupt the Wi-Fi, interrupt the thread. And so we, you know, we think where we landed with this sort of beautiful new uh, form factor and, and design sort of, you know, beautifully sort of manages all of those considerations. Now, the remotes have been uh, upgraded. Yep. Larger. I, I like the larger size. Yeah. But there's also a new button. Yeah. What's that new button about, and how do you guys see people using the new new button on there? Yeah. You, you know, we we took a lot of what people loved about the original, uh, you know, uh, remote. Uh, we made it longer, a lot more ergonomic. So it's not just longer and and taller, uh, but the back is sort of made of a rubber finish, so it's less slippery. It sort of fits in in hands of all sizes really, really well. We did things like you know make it more ergonomic by moving the volume buttons over to the front. Uh, and then like you mentioned, you know, we did add this uh, customizable button. Yeah. And I think the power of the customizable button is uh, it lets you sort of get to what you care about most as fast as possible. Uh, so on the Google TV streamer, that customizable button with a single click can get you to your smart home dashboard, the Google Home panel. Yeah. Uh, so you can see what's going on in the home. It can get you to your favorite app, or it can help you, you know, uh, you know, change various like settings on the actual TV itself. Yeah. But that's up to you. Uh, and so everyone can sort of have their own variation of what it can do. Uh, now you have a button at the back of yep. the Google TV streamer. Yeah. That's my new favorite button. It's it's mine too. Yes. My family is too, I should say, not just me. Why haven't you done it sooner? Is the question. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, listen, I, I I won't speak to the to the timing. I would just say that myself personally, but you know, we hear this from all of our users. Uh, you know, losing your remote is a pretty common thing uh, in a in a household of five. I can never find my remote. Uh, the kids have always put it somewhere. And so the button that you're talking about is the is the new find my my find my remote uh, yeah. button. Uh, and you can actually find your remote in a couple different ways. So you can press the physical button. You can also say, hey, Google, help me find my remote. Uh, and it will do that as well. Or you can open the Google Home app and, and, and click a button in there to, to find it as well. And the, the, the remote will, will beep. OK. Yeah. Now, this device is packed with a lot of current and forward-thinking TV entertainment tech. We've got yep. HMI 2.1, yep. Ethernet port, Wi-Fi, uh, supports Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. In terms of 
updates and future support. How are you guys planning to, do you have a commitment? Is this something that you're thinking, okay, we'll do, I'm not trying to compare it to like the Android updates, like a yeah. five year, 10 year, what's the process there for users as, if someone's looking to buy it, how long do they expect to at least keep using this with updates coming to the system? Yeah, it, when, you know, when we designed this device, I, I mentioned earlier, the original Chromecast was sort of built for that, that last decade of, yeah. of TV. Uh, we were very sort of intentional about building the Google TV streamer for, for the sort of next decade of, of streaming. Uh, and a big part of that is sort of stacking with the right set of technologies to, to do that, right? Uh, so you talked about you know, 4K, HDR, Dolby Atmos Vision, things like spatial audio and yeah. things like that. Uh, so we, we've put in all those capabilities so that on the software and the content side, we can enable them for various uh, partner apps and, and content. And so our, our teams are, are working with, with partners to do that. Okay, so no, no mandate on what how long you would support it, but you're just going to, going to continue with your partners yeah. on a yearly basis. Yeah. Okay, you talked about Thread, Matter, Hub, all built into that. Yep. Kind of leads me to your second device, mm -hmm. which is the four, I guess you could call it the fourth gen mm -hmm. uh, Google That's learning, learning thermostat. Service that. It's lovely, looks great. Um, design. Why did you guys go with this new aesthetic look? Um, I, I know why personally. It yeah, looks it would look great in my house. Yeah, but for you guys, what was the idea for the design philosophy here? Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, I would just say for the for the audience here, if I were to help you rewind twelve years uh, ago when we built the first Nest Learning thermostat, uh, you know, thermostats at that time were these sort of beige, ugly boxes that sat on the wall. Yeah, and the Nest Learning thermostat sort of came in. And, and sort of changed what you could expect of a device in the home, right? Uh, and that's our heritage. That's our sort of like legacy, if you will. Uh, it's been a while, like uh, the, you know, it's been nearly a, a decade. We've learned a lot in the last sort of, you know, nine or so years. And so we brought a lot of what users have loved, what people have loved, what, uh, uh, about that original, like that third gen Nest Learning thermostat, and br brought that to the new generation when we were designing it. And we evaluated hundreds of, of sort of options yeah. when designing it. And some of the things that people love about, or what we wanted to bring to this new one, uh, was some of the things that people loved about the old one, right? So what people loved was they loved the, the elevated design that made it sort of look really, really premium. They loved sort of the, the tactile sort of feedback of like a, a, a dial that you can physically turn. Mm -hmm. uh, they love sort of being able to like glance at the thermostat and be able to see visually, you know, what's happening at any given moment. Uh, and so we brought all of that and we thought we could do even better. Uh, and so that's what you see with the, with the new design uh, for the Nest Learning thermostat. We think it's going to be the most beautiful uh, thermostat on the market. And certainly we hope that'll be something that you put on your wall. Now with the the new thermostat, there's also a bunch of new features yeah. coming in. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of them that you guys uh, brought up was, of course, integration with Gemini mm -hmm. and uh, some of the Gemini automations. Can you explain how users would use that on a daily basis and what it brings to them? Because right now, setting up automations can be tedious. Yep. Uh, if you're a pro user, it's easy. If you're a regular person, you would just skip it. Yeah. So how are you, how are you helping people you know, enforce how to do that. Yeah, uh, you know, I we're at a really like fascinating point, uh, like as an industry in terms of AI. Like the the Nest Learning Thermostat has used AI for for a long time now, and and we use sort of AI models to optimize, you know, how we make you feel comfortable and how we save you money and things like that. Um, and and we're sort of supercharging that. So all of these sort of like algorithms that go into it, we're making them smarter. Uh, so you save more money and things are more efficient. Uh, similarly, on the streamer, which we just talked about, we're using AI to to do a lot of really cool things, like you know, build beautiful customizable wallpapers, for example, when your TV is sitting idle. Uh, but if I were to sort of take a step back and look across the entire Google Home ecosystem, uh, you know, we've we've always at sort of Nest and Google Home had this vision to build a home that is helpful uh, to people. Uh, we've we've always talked about building the helpful home. Uh, and in some ways, you know, we've been sort of limited by the technology of the day. And we think that Gemini and where we are today with large language models is, a, is sort of a major inflection point in the kinds of things we can unlock for the home, right? So that's, a, that's sort of just a, a little bit of a tee up. So today what, you know, what we're excited to share is that we're taking Gemini and bringing it to various parts of, of, of Google Home. So one of the things that you mentioned was how we're making home automation 
uh, easier and more accessible. So today, smart home automation is still very much a, you know, it's 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 something that a lot of power users, uh, you know, use very very deeply. Uh, and what we've heard from users time and time again is that they want the value and the benefits of home automation without the sort of the sort of complexity of setting it up. Uh, and so uh, that's why we thought home automation is a great way to say like, hey, let's bring Gemini, where you can sort of like use your natural language to say what you want, yeah. and then on the back end, we'll figure out how to translate that into the the various steps to get to that. So specifically, what that means is, if you all you care about is making yourself feel comfortable, you should not, we think, have to be able to be like, say, oh, when I'm home, turn the temperature to 26 degrees, but only do that if I'm home and my partner isn't. If my partner is also there, make sure that it's you know 71 yeah. instead of 69. Uh, now we can do all of that just by saying, you know, make me feel comfortable when both me and my partner are there. And then we'll create the automation for you and we give you control. So you can always tweak it as well. And so I think that's those are the kinds of things where we think AI can be an enabler to make things more easy and accessible for people. Uh, and then we give you control over the outcomes. What other um, aspects are you using AI in Gemini to, to improve the experience with Nest? Yeah, the, the other sort of like, there's a couple other big ones. Uh, you know, one of the big ones I would say is that you know we've been looking to bring Gemini to uh, and and sort of uh, the multimodal models to our cameras. So Nest cameras have historically you know had a whole variety of intelligence features built into it. So you know you can detect motion and packages and people. We'd always you know we went a step further. You know people detection was able to get to the uh, face level. So we had a feature called familiar faces where you can detect individuals uh, coming and going from your homes, uh, but. All of that can get supercharged with Gemini. So with, with multimodal models, uh, what these models can do is they can both they can use text, they can use vision, they can use audio. You can use all of that to sort of start to figure out what your camera is seeing and make that more useful for you. So if you've got a camera today, I think we, we were chatting about this earlier, all of us with cameras can empathize with the fact that we get hundreds of notifications. Yeah. And, and that's not a Nest camera thing, that's like a, any, any camera uh, thing, right? Like you get 100 motion detection, but I think what we know once we have cameras is not all motion is created equal. Mm -hmm. Not all people is created equal. Like a leaf falling is not the same as a truck driving by that you probably care about knowing. Uh, and so, you know, bringing Gemini to cameras means we'll be able to make our cameras significantly smarter. Uh, and so we're starting that with some, some specific features. Uh, so you'll be able to search your camera history now. Uh, but not for specific things. You can search generally, which is, we think, very, very powerful. Uh, the descriptions for what your events have are getting significantly richer. So these models are actually generating descriptions for what it's seeing. Uh, so that's going to be really, really powerful. You'll be able to do that in the Google Home app. Uh, so yeah, so you know, number two after home automation is that the cameras are going to get a step function increase in, in, uh, in its intelligence. The third one is, is the Google Assistant. Yeah. Uh, we've for some time had this vision that uh, the Google Assistant could play this, this role building out and delivering this proactive, helpful experience in the home, right across your speakers, your displays, your TVs. Uh, and, and part of that is like the home itself has a very unique set of contexts. The home is not quite like your phone. Yeah. Your phone is a very personal device, it's about you. Your home devices are about all of the people in your home. It's about understanding me, my partner, my kids, all of that and understanding how all of that works together. So when you're building an assistant for the home, you have to solve for that, that multi-user sort of scenario, this, the communal nature of it. Um, and, and the vision remains exactly the same, right? Like we yeah. still want to build that. Uh, you know, I think in general, not just us, but across the industry, again, limitation of technology, but I think where we are today you know, sets us up on a much better path to actually achieve that original vision of building a great assistive experience in the home. And so uh, what we're sharing is that later this year, we're already, we're already going to be bringing Gemini models to actually improve that Google Assistant experience on speakers and displays and, and, and TV. So, uh, you know, we're looking to make it, you know, a lot, uh, make the responses that you hear from uh, from Google Assistant a lot more natural. So we're bringing a lot more, like a, a number of new voices that will just seem a lot more natural and, and converse the way that, you know, we as humans uh, converse. Uh, we're also looking to make it uh, a lot more capable as well. So excited about that. Cool. So before we wrap up, yeah, rapid fire questions. Let's go. All right. Um, favorite streaming service? 
favorite streaming service? Um, kind of depends on the content I'm watching. Right now, um, Apple TV Plus and YouTube TV for the Olympics. Okay. Um, first streaming device? Chromecast. Chromecast? Okay. Yeah. OG Chromecast. OG Chromecast. Yeah. All right. Um, favorite smart home product? Who favorite smart home product? Um, I have three kids. It's my Nest Cam. <laughs> okay. Enough said. <laughs> Um, I was going to say favorite auto home automation, but it might have to do with observing the kids. <laughs> we do a whole, we can do a whole episode on just that. How about that? Um, uh, final question is, what would be your ideal smart home product? My ideal smart home product. Interesting. It's a huge category. It is a lot of things. Yeah. I don't. I know this is going to be a slight, slight non-answer. For me, it's not a single product. Okay. Uh, for me, the like, and and by the way, this is I I took this job because I believe in this, and I, I believed in this before I I, I I stepped into this role. But uh, the smart home for me has always been about like how do I get all the things in my home to work together? Yeah. We're still not there. Like, not everything works as seamlessly as it should. Um, and so for me, the 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 silver bullet or my my holy grail smart home product is when all of the devices in my home are working well together, where things are actually getting better and smarter and stuff like that. Uh, so maybe it's a it's a single app or assistant that brings all of it like really 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 well together. All right. So yeah. ho- hopefully Gemini. Can yeah, that. yeah. I think the you know the Gemini infused version of, of uh, like as we, t- as we take Google Assistant and make it smarter, I think the combination of Google Assistant and the home app could, could play that role. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Hey, absolute pleasure. Yes, and thank if you, you guys enjoyed that and you have any questions for Anish or the Google Nest and Google Home team, let us know and we'll try and pass them on to him. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave your thoughts on the different products and always enjoy your entertainment. Hit that like button.